Greetings everyone, my name is Sean, and welcome to my channel, Time for Evolution. This video series intends to make important academic research articles more accessible to the public. Join me in this quest for knowledge. Introduction. Every type of psychiatric medication initially produces effects that are specific to the particular drug's unique impact on neurotransmitters and other aspects of brain function. The SSRI antidepressants block the removal of the neurotransmitter serotonin from the synapses. The antipsychotic drugs suppress and block dopamine neurotransmission, and the benzodiazepines amplify GABA neurotransmission, which in turn suppresses overall brain function. All psychiatric drugs have specific initial biochemical effects. Over time, other neurotransmitter systems react to the initial effects, and broader changes begin to take place in the brain and in mental functioning. Antipsychotic induced brain damage and dysfunction from long term exposure. The neurotoxicity of antipsychotic drugs has been studied and demonstrated for decades. Studies of all classes of psychiatric drugs have yielded similar findings of mental dysfunction and atrophy of the brain in humans after long term exposure, as well as atrophy of the brain, abnormal proliferations of cells, and persistent biochemical changes in animals. For the benzodiazepines, for lithium, and for antidepressants, see the brain and its associated mental processes respond in a very similar fashion to injuries from causes as diverse as electroshock treatment, closed head injury from repeated sports-induced concussions, or TBI in wartime, chronic abuse of alcohol and street drugs, long-term exposure to psychiatric polydrug treatment, and long-term exposure to particular classes of psychiatric drugs, including stimulants, benzodiazepines, lithium, and antipsychotic drugs. Based on these observations, I have proposed the syndrome and diagnosis of chronic brain impairment, CBI. The specific cause of the CBI is added as a prefix, as in alprazolam CBI, antipsychotic drug CBI, or polypsychiatric drug CBI. Other examples are ECT CBI, polydrug abuse CBI, and concussive CBI. Symptoms and characteristics of CBI Kate knowledge about CBI can help the clinician to identify the more subtle but potentially disabling effects of long-term exposure to psychiatric drugs and aid the clinician in determining the need to reduce or terminate drug treatment. CBI leads individual patients to seek psychiatric help for themselves. But often, they do not attribute their worsening condition to drug effects. Psychiatric drug CBI, like all CBI, is associated with generalized brain dysfunction and manifests itself in an overall compromise of mental function. To help in identifying these deficits in clinical practice, the CBI syndrome can be divided into four symptom complexes which commonly present together. One, cognitive dysfunctions which manifest in the early stages, as short-term memory dysfunction and impaired new learning, inattention, and difficulty concentrating. In contrast to the diagnosis of dementia, the clinical criteria for CBI are more consistent with the actual clinical phenomenon associated with more subtle aspects of generalized or global brain dysfunction, including subtle cognitive deficits, apathy, affective dysregulation, and anisognosia. I was not viewed as a unitary syndrome resulting from any physical harm to the brain. Confounding factors. When a patient has been exposed to years of psychiatric medication, other factors can cause or exacerbate psychiatric drug-induced CBI.CBI will usually begin to improve when the psychiatric drug dose is reduced. Pathology. Caused by a primary psychiatric disorder would be expected to worsen as the medication is reduced. After a syndrome consistent with CBI is identified, improvement with drug withdrawal is probably the most useful diagnostic criterion in distinguishing psychiatric drug-induced CBI from other disorders. The symptoms are partially or entirely relieved and the quality of life improves. Another potential confounding factor is exposure to other psychoactive substances. Except for improvement on withdrawal from the psychiatric medications, CBI can be difficult to distinguish from closed head injury without or without accompanying PTSD. Patient awareness of CBI many patients 
desire to come off psychiatric drugs because they have some awareness of their deteriorating mental function, they almost never fully grasp how impaired they have become. Drug-induced anosognosia, when severe, can become intoxication anosognosia, or medication spellbinding, in which an individual can develop dangerous behavioral patterns, including suicide and violence, that would not otherwise have occurred. This risk must be taken into account by the prescriber, the therapy team, the patient, and the patient's support network, especially during dose changes and withdrawal. Frequency of CBI psychiatric drug CBI was relatively rare in the early decades of my career in psychiatry. I graduated medical school in 1962, when far fewer children and teens were treated with psychiatric drugs, when polydrug treatment was looked upon much more critically, when doctors rarely encourage patients to stay on psychiatric drugs for the remainder of their lives, and when potent antipsychotic drugs were not given out so freely to patients with no signs whatsoever of psychosis, it is difficult to estimate what percentage of patients will develop CBI after years of exposure to psychiatric drugs. Most patients who remain on these chemical agents for many years will develop some symptoms of CBI. If the patient is taking multiple psychiatric drugs for years at a time, in my experience, CBI is always marked. The most noticeable effects are short-term memory dysfunction and a loss of interest in daily activities, hobbies, creative endeavors, and sometimes family and friends. Individuals exposed long-term to psychiatric drugs will commonly report a loss of interest, intensity, or satisfying engagement in these activities. Sometimes they will deny their losses, which are confirmed by family members and loved ones. Recovery from CBI recovery from CBI usually begins early in the withdrawal process and can continue for some time, even years after stopping all psychiatric medication. If the patient does not begin displaying significant improvement in CBI symptoms during the drug withdrawal process, the clinician should suspect the presence of another underlying medical disorder and take appropriate steps to ensure adequate medical evaluation. Adult patients are more likely to experience continued subtle CBI difficulties with memory, attention, or concentration after withdrawal from years of exposure to psychiatric medication. But even in the presence of residual symptoms, they can lead fulfilling lives. Even if this occurs, improvement in the patient's CBI may be worth it to the patient and the family. These relapses are often due to delayed withdrawal reactions manifested. For example, as the return of depression a few weeks after antidepressant withdrawal or the return of manic symptoms within weeks after withdrawal from lithium. The best way to prevent CBI is to use psychiatric medications sparingly and to limit exposure to the shortest possible length of time. Treatments for CBI, the initial and only effective treatment for CBI is complete withdrawal from all psychiatric drugs, as well as all other psychoactive substances. Patients should be discouraged from turning to additional psychoactive substances, including herbs or natural remedies, as they can worsen the CBI and interfere with the successful withdrawal process. Couples or family therapy is potentially the most effective. It can help the uninjured partner understand the struggle to triumph over brain dysfunction and strengthen the relationship in supportive ways for both partners. Encourage individuals with CBI to rediscover activities that they once loved. The work of psychiatric drug withdrawal, while sometimes difficult and hazardous, can be very gratifying to the clinician and extremely empowering to the patient and family. Conclusion by learning to recognize psychiatric drug-induced chronic brain impairment, CBI, clinicians can enhance their ability to identify patients who need to be withdrawn from long-term psychiatric drug treatment. CBI symptoms are the main reason why patients and their families seek professional help in withdrawing from psychiatric medications. The symptoms of this syndrome include, one, Cognitive deficits often first noticed as short-term memory dysfunction, an impaired new learning, and difficulty with attention and concentration. Two, apathy, indifference, or an overall loss of enjoyment and interest in life activities. Three, effective dysregulation, including emotional lability, loss of empathy, and increased irritability. Four, anosognosia, or a lack of self-awareness about these changes in mental function and behavior. 
Most patients begin to recover from CBI early in the withdrawal process, even when recovery is incomplete or psychiatric relapses occur off the medication. Most patients remain grateful for their improved CBI and wish to remain on reduced medication or none at all.